The far right menace is employing the internet with some vigor. How do we handle this digital civil war? Leave your comments, ding the bell, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I, I want to bring in Peter Dow. He's the uh, Democratic me uh, digital media strategist, author of the new book, Digital Civil War, Confronting the Far Right Menace's website, Peter Dow, D-A-O-U.com. And you can tweet him, of course, at Peter Dow, D-A-O-U. Uh, Peter, welcome to the program. Uh, nice to be on. Thanks, Tom. And by the way, I wanted to uh, give a tip of the hat to you. Um, you and I were on opposite sides of the Bernie Hillary wars during the last primary. And um, you were basically calling for peace. And I've been doing the same. I'm not endorsing anybody specifically going into the primary. I think we've got a lot of really great candidates. Um, and uh, occasionally I get people calling into the program who try to Re, you know, revive the Bernie Hillary wars on this show, and I, I basically hang up on them. I, but uh, I, I think all of us need to be working together on this. I'd like you to riff about that real briefly, and then we'll get to your book. Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, you know, I, I've been doing this for a long time, and I, I remember all the great work you've done over the years as well. So 2016, really, I see it as essentially one of those family disputes that just goes wrong you know, the temperature gets so heated. We, we were not prepared for what happened in 2016. And I don't want to dismiss, you know, a lot of the pain and, and frustration and hurt that took place. People can't erase that, and I don't want to erase that. Right. What I'm saying is let's hit the pause button because what we're facing in the next couple of years is essentially a far-right takeover of our country in a way where we may not be able to come back and get it back ever again. So, you know, we're facing an unprecedented threat and my attitude right now is we all have to work together. So well, it, it's critically important. And, well, and, and same as you, I haven't endorsed anyone, but I've advocated for, and I, you know, I was a major critic of Bernie Sanders and a huge supporter of Hillary Clinton, as everybody knows, in 2016. But this is 2019 going into 2020. And we have a threat that is unprecedented, certainly in our lifetimes. Yeah, amen, which, which speaks to your book, Digital Civil War, Confronting the Far-Right Menace. Um, the... And I think that this is, this is, as I said, uh, you know, before you came on, I think one of the one of the most consequential forms of damage that this president has done to our country is uh, basically destroying the the notion of, of of checks and balances in our government, the the notion of civility in politics. Um, you know, he has elevated the, the, the politics of grievance and hate. Uh, I, I, th I think he's following a trajectory that was pioneered by Rupert Murdoch, uh, first in Australia, then in the U.K., and now here in the United States with Fox News. Um, you know, uh, Kevin Rudd, the former prime minister of Australia, has written about this. He wrote a piece uh, recently for the Sydney Morning Herald called uh, is saying that uh, uh, Murdoch is the cancer on Australian democracy. He owns more than half the newspapers in Australia right now. And... And, but that's just like the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's this giant, you know, thing that grew out of essentially the, the Powell memo uh, back in 71. Tell us about the digital, why, the cho why did you choose the title Digital Civil War and what specifically are you addressing in this book? Well, there, there are two points. You raised a, a crucial point that I want to come to in, in terms of uh, Murdoch and Fox, et cetera. Look, I grew up, I'm an American, but I grew up in Beirut, Lebanon during the Civil War there. So I spent 10 years of my life in an actual Civil War, hiding in bomb shelters, you know, dealing with what you see in Iraq and Syria today. That was my childhood. So I grew up wow. in the Civil War, and I, and I understand that there's, there's a component of internal war and strife in general that I think a lot of people in the U.S. who have not experienced it uh, should know more about it. And it's one of the reasons I wrote the book. You know, I, I feel that we've reached a point in this country where when you see some of the debates, it's clear we've moved past the point of actually trying to use logic to convince people of positions. And now it's essentially we're at odds in such a way that it essentially is a civil war. And then all these terms go around uncivil war, cold civil war, soft civil war. There are a lot of different you know, uh, terms people use. And when I thought about it, I thought this fight is being fought predominantly online, which is why you talk, see the Russia, the Russian infiltration was a digital, was a cyber attack, essentially. Yeah. So you see Trump, you know, Twitter is his main form of getting his message out there. So we're in a battle. To me, it's a fight to the political death, essentially. The, the far right, the right wing extremist Republican Party wants to destroy blue America and everything it stands for, and, and, and in state one-party rule, authoritarian rule. This is what they're aiming for. They're stacking the judiciary. It's, it's a, it's a long-term plan. So 
for me, this is really a fight, and we have to look at it as a fight for our political lives, for everything that this country stands for. Now, you raised Murdoch and Fox. Part of the book, part of Digital Civil War is after 20 years. This is my first book. I've waited to write it because I wanted to get the information and really try to understand what's happening. The right-wing information system, it's really a right-wing attack or propaganda system with Fox, Sinclair, now YouTube, Facebook, blogs, websites, etc. Right-wing hate radio. Yeah, hate radio, absolutely. Radio as well. So if you look at this messaging infrastructure that they have, there is nothing like it on our side. You do great work. There are great people doing radio, podcasts, etc. on the progressive side. But nothing like the oligarch-funded think tanks and communication system that has been developed over 40, 50 years. And if you take a look at the fights we're having in the Civil War, if you, you know, I, if you look at, you know, 150 years ago, the battlefields were the fields of the South, right? The big fields in which armies, standing armies faced each other. But now we have this massive fight that's happening online. And it's happening on the far right's turf, Tom. This is the thing that's so disturbing to me. If you take a look at abortion, for example, now the talking point is Democrats support murdering babies. Right. And this is happening. This right is what Trump said Saturday night. Exactly. The right. woman gives birth to the baby, they wrap it up, they take a nice care of it, and then the woman sits down with her doctor and decides whether or not to kill the baby. This uh, no. does not happen, has never happened, and, and it is, it's, it's pouring gasoline on this fire of the debate around abortion. Precisely. It's, it's a heinous, hideous lie. But this is the way they message. The entire national debate, and now the national, essentially, digital civil war is being fought on the far right's turf. Look at guns. We're actually debating whether elementary school teachers should go into their classrooms with weapons. Right. It's, it's, it's outlandish. Immigration. We're debating whether we should be stealing babies from parents and caging them in frigid holding cells. Every single issue you look at, abortion as well, the entire conversation is moved by this massive propaganda system to the far right's turf. So even to get to just zero, to square one, for Democratic candidates running for 2020, they need to understand and point out how the system is working, or we're just spinning our wheels. Look, again, I remember you from way back, Tom. You've been doing this a long time. You've been fighting the fight a long time. And 2016 sort of went off the rails for everybody. But since 2000, 2001, I've been fighting the far right. And at this point, I'm looking at myself and saying, I'm failing because the fringe sort of free republic Breitbart comment sections that were really considered fringe when I was doing this are now running the country. Right. So we have gone backwards. Yes, we've had the Obama victory. We had the midterms. But despite these victories, right now we're far worse off than we were 20 years ago. And I'm asking myself how. So part of writing Digital Civil War is to say, okay, this is what's happening. We need to see it for what it is. So how do we solve this problem, Peter? I mean, we've, we've been uh, you know, a kind of acknowledging the existence of this uh, of the of the hard right for some time. You got Jane Mayer's book, you know, Dark Money, the Democracy in Chains, Nan Nancy McLean's book. There's some really great, great stuff out there that just lays all this stuff out, but it just rolls along. I mean, you know, it's a, you got Mitch McConnell stacking the courts right now with literally people who are in their 30s who have never tried a case, uh, you know, and and suddenly they have a lifetime federal judgeships. Well, Brett Kavanaugh never tried a case. Uh, you know, it's it's like, this is this it's, is it's nuts. Terrifying. What do we do? It's well, well. This is this is what I feel. Look, no, none of us really have a solution. And again, having lived through a war, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be a downer, but sometimes the outcome is not what you want it to be. I mean, right. the, the, we we are fighting for our lives here, but we have to acknowledge that even the best of intentions and the best of fights can sometimes not result in victory. But here's what I think we need to do. The first step is we have to look inside ourselves. The process that I've gone through from 2016 to today with the Bernie Sanders side and the Hillary Clinton supporters is to look inside myself and ask myself what role I've played. Have I been constructive? Have I been productive? So that's the first part, to, to really just acknowledge the truth of who we are and what sure. we can do. The second step is to see reality for exactly what it is. I think one of the biggest problems is we want to feel that there are saviors. You know, Mueller was going to be the savior, then Nancy Pelosi is going to be the savior, or Chuck Schumer. No one's coming to save us, Tom. This is, this is what we, we need to all see. We need to be our own leaders. We need to step up, find what it is we do best. You know, if you like to canvas, you want to phone bank, you want to organize, you want to blog, you want to do a podcast, you know, go on social media and, and speak up. Every single one of those roles matter. Choose something that you can do best that you want to do and do it to the best of your ability. I take a look at a friend of mine, Shannon Watts, who started Mom's Demand. 
she she started a Facebook page a few years ago to fight gun violence, you know, after Sandy Hook. It now has chapters in 50 states. They're making tangible progress on guns. This is just a stay-at-home mom, former communications executive, and look what she's been able to do. Right. We need to be our own leaders. The Democratic Party is not going to save us. And, and, and it, it's, it's painful to say this, but the impeachment debate is a perfect example. If Donald Trump does not get impeached or deserve impeachment, then nobody does. Yeah. So this is a massive failure on the part of the Democratic establishment.